We're going to go over something we touched on, but didn't really, I don't think, get into enough. It's an important part of Avid, and that's something called the trim mode. Now, the Avid we're using now, uh, this was just a whole new user interface, even though it's based on basically the way it always worked. But the user interface is different. In classic Avid interface, that they had kind of since the beginning, there were icons that represented the source record edit mode, the effect mode, and the trim mode. They've kind of removed that now, replaced it with the, the workspaces on the side, and the trim mode is now initiated in a different way. Uh, that would be over here with this icon here, this little kind of film roller flag thing. And so the colors of red and yellow are specific. If I right click it, I can see here there's the red roller and the yellow roller. And the same way we dealt with the arrows, uh, red means to overwrite something or to totally erase something, leave a space. And yellow means to insert or pull things together. So you'd want to select one or both of these. You could select both. Let's select the red one first. And when I do that, now I can come somewhere to some division. You're trimming the edge of some edit. So let's say this, uh, here we have the dog lady. Here's some B-roll, dog lady speaks. And then we have Snarl Lady Speaks and more B-roll. Let's say we wanted to trim some of the words. Broken limb, um, and then we put them into um, the... So maybe the um we want to get rid of, we want to trim that. So we go to that point. Now with this icon, this trim icon highlighted, we click. And once we click there, you'll see the window, the composer window changes. What it now represents is no longer source and record, but it represents the last frame of this clip and the first frame of the next clip. Okay, so that's something to look at. And you see here in the timeline, it has sort of these pink rollers, meaning that we will equally trim one side and the other. Here also, it indicates how many frames. So in this case, where I've clicked it with the red trim roller, and I move it frame by frame, this is one frame in either direction, or 10 frames, one frame in either direction, trimming it, trimming it, trimming it. You can see here, it tells you how many frames. If I go backwards, 10, let's say, you see it's moved in this direction 26 frames and in this direction the other way 26 frames so adding some to this side removing some from that side and here in the timeline we can see how it moved and you can kind of drag it this is you know changing this is changing adding frames to one taking it away from the other now if i wanted to just select one side and leave the other one alone. I, matter of fact, I'm going to change, go back to normal by going up to edit, undo, redo list, and all these trims I did, I will go to the last one and undo, but a boom, here we are back at the zero point. But let's say I just want to get rid of something on this side. If you look here, when I'm in the middle, the icon is like a two-sided roller. But if I go to this side, it's one-sided, meaning I will trim this side only, or here, trim this side only. So if I click only this side, let's say, you'll notice also then only this numeric panel is highlighted in pink. This one is gray, like we did with the keyframes. Pink means it's active. And now if I trim, and if we look at the timeline, well, I do this trim 10 frames, it moved in 10 frames, and notice that it left a space there. And then we put them into loving. So I was able to get rid of the um. And then we put them in. But I have this space here. So that may not be what I want to do. So let's undo that. I'm going to go Command Z. We're back to where we were. Suppose I want to trim this side, but not leave a space. In effect, 
pull everything down and close up the space. Then I would have to select the yellow arrow. Command click. There's yellow. And you can have both, but I'm going to deselect the red just to make it easier and select only the yellow. So now when I come here and I have that trim icon selected, click here. This opens up again to the trim mode. This time with the yellow, I'm going to select only this side. Click that. And now I'm going to move it 10 frames. And notice, I'll do some more. Watch the timeline. You'll see everything pull up closer. It's taking frames away from here, but leaving this side alone. Okay, so that's what happens. But notice how it brings everything together. It does that because... If you see over here, these little tick marks are selected. I can do and undo each one, or clicking down here where it says time code, I can do the whole thing. That keeps everything in sync. They're called sync marks, so that everything moves together. Again, I'm going to undo that and show you. Let's go to edit, undo, redo list, undo a symmetric trim meaning only one side and i am not going to synchronize things on track two and three the b-roll and the text and i am not going to synchronize any of this other audio the music and everything and so now i've selected the trim i've selected only that side and if i move 10 frames you'll see that this watch this carefully this will pull up closer. You'll see this picture change. But notice that track 2 with the B-roll has not changed. And also here at the end, where this was previously back here, this is a little bit of a danger when you do this, that you'll trim one part of the timeline and not another part. Now things are not where they originally were. They will have moved out of place. Again, let me undo that. If instead I have all the sync marks selected and I do that one-sided trim, that asynchronous trim, you will see everything comes together, even though I'm only trimming, per se, these tracks here. And there you see the B-roll move closer, the end move closer as well. One thing that gets messed up, though, on the move off, is that we've now sliced the music where previously that was one continuous thing. Let's see if we hear what that did. I'm going to solo that track so we just hear the music. And you can see we made an edit there that that doesn't kind of work for us. So again, undo everything. And this time I'm going to not synchronize, deselect these sync marks and leave the music alone. Click there. Here we are. Trim this in 10 frames. And now this moved up, but the music, if we take a look, there's no cut there. So that's fine, but it will change the end where this was uh, lined up. The music, although it's not cut here, and again, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do that, but take a look at the, the ending points of the clip. I'm going to take away 10 frames only from the Snarl Lady side. I'm clicking there. I see the pink only on that side. 10 frames. Notice how those top tracks are moving while the music isn't. So, you know, there's always this danger. And it's, it's a matter, again, of deciding how am I going to do this? Uh, you know, maybe I had the music button or hit at the end. Ba -da -ba -bum, and now that won't happen because we've shortened what happened here. So this is part of the, you know, edit process. Editing is not just pushing the buttons, but it's deciding what to do. And if we look at what happened here, let's go back. If I just click outside, we'll go out of the trim mode, click here on the timeline. And we could see, let's take a look at what we have. The, by the way, uh, the, this, the source monitors, usually when you're in the trim mode, it'll show you only that line. So I have to go back, select all three. And if I go here, I got the B-roll, I got the dog lady. But notice how it pulled up the other B-roll. So I don't see the Snarl Lady. Maybe that's what I want. But again, I'm going to have to do something with this end music here. You can see where that is. And it 
keeps going. You know, so I would have to cut that back now and bring it back. And you can by just trimming, you know, keeping this trim icon selected. And let's say, let's do the red one this time. Like red. Okay. And we click this here, you know, only those two tracks and drag that back to where we want it. Okay, I'm going to drag it back to here so it ends with everything else. Again, click out of it by clicking the, the time, black time bar there on the timeline. And so now it ends together. So, you know, you start trimming things, it's important, but it affects other things in the timeline depending how you're uh, using that. So the trim mode is very powerful, especially in Avid, uh, but you know, there's with power, there comes danger and warning, you know, uh, so you have to use it very carefully, understand what you're doing, that will take time. But basically by using the sync marks, which I usually keep on until I don't need them, it's simpler and easier to do that, and then trim what I want. Um, you know, and, the, and there are other ways. You know, in the beginning, we were we had a little bleep or bloop. We put an in and an out and lifted it. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing, just different ways of approaching it. And the more you edit, the more you will get used to this and other methods. All right, so that's just a little bit more of a focus on the trim mode and think that's enough to get you started to understand how it works.